In this lecture, we are going to build a Hello World Haskell project with Cabal. Join me in your terminal or command line application. Here we're going to CD into the folder where we will create the project folder. Then we'll create the project folder itself called Hello Cabal. Then we'll enter the Hello Cabal folder. In here, we're going to use the Cabal command line tool to initialize a new project with the command init. You have two options for the mode. There is interactive mode and non-interactive mode. Non-interactive mode is the default and it will just simply pick defaults for your project options and metadata. You can just use Cabal init for that. Or you can choose interactive mode by using the interactive flag. This means you'll create a new project in interactive mode so it will walk you through the package options and metadata. So you can hit enter with interactive mode and you'll get this message. Should I generate a simple project with sensible defaults? The default is yes, but you can enter N for no. That way you can specify your own defaults. We can ask what does the package build? An executable, a library, or a library and executable? So here we can choose which of these three options is our project. An executable is a standalone program. A library is a collection of Haskell modules that can be reused by other Haskell libraries and programs. So depending on your project, you can choose an executable, a library, or you can choose option three, both. In this case, for a simple project, we can choose one for executable, then hit enter and you'll be asked what is the main module of the executable. One for main.haskell does not exist yet but will be created. Main.lhs does not yet exist but will be created. LHS refers to literate Haskell. Haskell is one of the few languages that provides native support features for literate programming. So you can have code and non-code non -code portions or other. So our choice will be the default main.haskell, so you can just hit enter. This will be the main entry point to the app. Next, we're asked what version of the Cabal specification to use. 1.10, the legacy. 2.0, to allow support for backpack, internal sublibs, and a specific operator, very commonly used. 2.2 for support for common ELIF redundant commas and SPDX. 2.4 support for star star globbing or 3.0 set notation for checking equality, common stanzas in ifs, more redundant commas and better package config dash depend. So let's choose 5 which is the latest option 3.0. Next up, we'll get a package name suggestion. We can hit enter to use the default. Same thing for package version. Then we can select a license. We have none. We have others like Apache, MIT, GPL. So let's choose five for MIT. Hit enter and next we can specify the author name, the maintainer email, the project homepage URL, the project synopsis, the project category, so you can just hit enter through all of these to quickly create them. The application directory, so app source dash exe none or other. This refers to what folder name should be used to store your Haskell files. Commonly, a folder called app is used, so we can hit enter for the default. Next, we're asked for the base language the package is written in, Haskell 2010, Haskell 98 or other. We're choosing Haskell 2010, the latest version. Next, we get a question, add informative comments to each field in the Cabal file, yes or no. We can hit yes to get some informative comments to explain the Cabal file. Then we see generating or guessing dependencies, generating license, generating changelog, generating main.haskell, generating hellocabal.cabal. Warning, no synopsis is given. You should edit the Cabal file and add one. You may want to edit the Cabal file and add a description field. And then our project has been created. So now let's do an overview of the files that were just created. So don't miss the next lecture.
Previously, we built a Hello World Haskell project with Cabal. In this lecture, we're going to do an overview of the structure of a Cabal project for an executable and overview what is the main Haskell module. So when you create a new Cabal project, you get this structure. You have your project folder, which I've opened up with a code editor known as Visual Studio Code. I also have a Haskell extension in my code editor, which is a free extension for syntax highlighting so that we can highlight different keywords in our Haskell files with different colors. So inside of your project, you'll have an app folder. This contains all your Haskell files, such as your Plutus smart contracts or just regular Haskell files. By default, one file has been created called main.hs. HS is the file extension for Haskell. As well, outside of that app folder, we have a changelog.markdown file. This shows revision history for the project. We can see the first version of the project has been created. We also get a .cabal file, which we will explain later on in this section. But as an overview, the Cabal file lists the metadata about the project and the packages that are used. And finally, we have a license file. This lists out, is the project free to use and copy and distribute? What is the license? So that's an overview of the structure of a simple Cabal project. Now, let's explain this main.haskell file. So this is a simple Haskell file that has been created by Cabal and it has created a Haskell module. We know it's a module because it has that module keyword at the top. A Haskell program consists of a collection of modules. So in our program, our project, we only have one Haskell module right now, but we could add more that are working together. A module serves the purpose of controlling namespaces and creating data types. It's a declaration that begins with the keyword module. And then in here you put functions to define what you want your program to do. A module defines values, data types, functions, classes, and can use imports to help it do its job. So it can import functionality. It can also export functionality to be used in other files. A Haskell program is a collection of modules and one must be called main and export the value main. That's because this is the entry point to the whole application. So this would be like the door to the app and then you could have other modules as well. The value of the program is the value of the identifier main lowercase in the module main that is capitalized. So by convention, a module name is capitalized, but a value or a function name is lowercase. The main entry point or main value must be of type IO. So at the top here, we have a module called main. The where keyword specifies that what's coming next is the module. Actions which return no interesting values use the unit type of two parentheses, which means that they don't return any value that's useful. This is like having a void function in other programming languages. So if you use the, just these two parentheses, it means that your function doesn't return or store any value. It just does a job, but it doesn't store any value. These two colons and IO, they specify that the function is of the IO type. And for a main value, you must have the type IO. This allows you to define a function in Haskell. So in this case, we're not returning anything useful in the main function because it's just doing a job. It's not storing a value. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.